if you take not just the city, but you take the London region, um, it is arguably the, the nearest place on earth that is in any way choreographing globalization. Um, some stats. More international phone calls made uh, from London than any other place on earth. More people coming through the London airports than any other place on earth. 130 million a year is against 110 for New York. Um, more international money managed, of course. Um, but the one that I grab onto is that there are actually, it's the largest professional non-national community on the planet. All the problems in British banking were in organizations not headquartered in the city or in London. You know, think about it, Royal Bank of Scotland, Bank of Scotland, all right, Lloyds was suckered into it, but uh, you know, we shouldn't go to uh, uh, cocktail parties in Spencer House and, be, uh, and have conversations with the Prime Minister. Um, uh, um, Northern Rock, where, where it all began, even as a sort of secondary thing, which didn't quite get their alliance, all Alliance and Leicester, all headquartered outside the city, which I think says something about the need for proximity and regulation. The catalyst of the crisis, as we know, was not just bankers. It was a whole load of people, including politicians, who enjoyed huge amounts of tax revenue and turned a blind eye. The regulators have failed to regulate, the credit rating agencies who couldn't rate credit, uh, and everybody else. So there's a whole host of people involved in this. And what I say is very bright people coming out of Cambridge with a double whatever in maths who constructed fail-safe black boxes which told you exactly how much risk you were taking. All of them failed. Just as the city has been acquired over the past 20 years in various ways by German, Swiss and American institutions, there is an assumption that Indian, Chinese, Russian, and Brazilian institutions will be on the acquisition trail. And I suppose at least my question is how British is the city? I mean, that is the fantastic draw about it. This is why the city retains its preeminence, because it's open to everybody. The 300 languages spoken. You can come from anywhere in the world and find a community in London. You'll find restaurants you actually understand eating the food in, things like this. There is no colour prejudice, there's no race prejudice or whatever like that. It's just a question of can you do your job. You think of Germany and you see multiple successful, prosperous cities. You look at Britain, you see one hugely successful city. And you've explained very cogently why it's a, a magnet for talent and global talent. Is it possible to replicate that elsewhere in Britain or is London's success doomed? Does it dooms the other cities to permanent failure because it is such a powerful magnet? When I'm wearing my City UK hat, um, I do actually, it is my job to say to somebody looking to come into Britain, maybe L London isn't for you. Maybe you should be up there. Lower costs, good workforce, everything else. Not necessarily London first. And so it's, but, but it's better to have them in Leeds, Liverpool or Edinburgh than it is in Paris, Frankfurt or New York. There's a bit of flash down here, even now, and there ain't much, even in Manchester, which is not, not an unsuccessful city. So I do worry about the rest of Britain. We have great universities in this country. They are largely based around the country, uh, you know, in the Russell Group and elsewhere, Manchester, Liverpool, Newcastle, Glasgow, great centres of academic research. How would you recommend that we make more of those as drivers of the knowledge and also your economy? My view is we've really got to tackle the big issue. The big issue is we have too many young people who are not qualified for anything uh, and who are going to have difficulty finding work. Somehow or other we need to tackle that. But I, education to me, what was it, it was probably Blair or somebody, it's gone well bad. It, it is about education, education, education. Uh, and uh, we must not shoot ourselves in the foot by restricting visas for foreign students, which we actually uh, are in huge danger of doing right now. Uh, it's actually really, really serious. People that aren't uh, in an old way really comfortable about saying that growth is just good in itself. How do you kind of go about defending uh, what the uh, city is, justifying in its own terms? I mean, you could kind of dodge the question and say, long term we will sell mortgages to the Indians and Chinese and move to Hong Kong. What we want is bankers earning lots of money because we take a lot of tax. On a bonus, it's nearing 70% marginal rate. Nobody ever talks about that. 
So I do think we need to be profitable there. But you're right, it's going to be difficult. But the thing that worries me still, unfortunately, and believe you me, I've tried, everybody's tried, is to try and get cer certain banks, this is the investment banks, to try and act in some form of collective responsible way with their bonuses. And then, frankly, it has just proved impossible. They're so busy eating each other that they really can't work together. And I am worried that, you know, in a year's time when people are really suffering, there'll be another headline bit about XYZ's bonuses. So we're not out in the woods yet. I think it'll be hugely helpful when they manage to sell Royal Bank uh, and the Lloyd shares back to the public if they can sell them at a profit. You know, they actually make a profit for the taxpayer, then that sort of, sort of starts to make feel, people feel a bit better. Thank you so very much. I mean, a special thanks to, to Stuart, but also thanks to you for a series of really interesting questions. I think we could have gone on for about another two and a half hours and still have been reasonably enjoying it. Um, Stuart, thank you very okay. much indeed. <laughs>